Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Um, my name is Carla Jansen, and as a member of this congregation, I am happy to welcome you to Millwoods United Church. This morning, some of us are here in person, while others participate live on Facebook. Each Sunday, we gather to share and celebrate, to discuss our sacred values, and to confront the mysteries of life and love. We welcome you wherever you may be in your spiritual quest or journey. Seekers, doubters, questioners, and believers all make up our community here. We also celebrate everything that makes you, you, inclusive of your sexual orientation, gender identity, and cultural background. As an affirming congregation, we work to make the church a place where all of us feel included and safe. We also acknowledge the land. This building in Southeast Edmonton is on the traditional and contemporary territory of Treaty 6 First Nations and Métis Region No. 4, a traditional meeting ground, gathering place, and traveling route for many Indigenous peoples. We honor and recognize the rich artistic, cultural, and spiritual traditions of the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Métis, Dene, <clears throat> Salto, Métis, and the many more Indigenous communities that call this land we share home. Wherever we find ourselves this morning, let us remember the people who have cared for this land over thousands of years. All of us are treaty people, for which we give thanks. Here is one way in which we can honor the Indigenous communities. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission put together 94 calls to action. We would like to occasionally highlight some of these when we acknowledge the land. Here is number 59, one of these calls to action that is directed towards the church. We call upon church parties to the settlement agreement to develop ongoing education strategies to ensure that their respective congregations learn about their church in role in colonization, the history and legacy of residential schools, and why apologies to former residential school students, their families and communities were necessary. Friends, I am glad we can be together today. Every day at this church, people join in, reach out, and make a difference. To read more about the work of our church and upcoming events, you can subscribe to our e-newsletter, What's the Buzz, on the church website. This e-newsletter is put out every Thursday. Does anyone have an announcement to make today? Okay. Sure. As most of you know, October 29th is going to be the covenanting ceremony uh, for Eli welcoming, welcoming her officially to the church. And right after, we're going to be having a soup and bun lunch. So to make sure that we have enough for everyone, we would like and very much appreciate you signing up at the back under the clock to let us know if you plan on attending so that we can all eat hearty. Thanks. Well, I have one. <laughs> so our Congregational Care Committee has taken over the duties of organizing coffee and tea on Sunday mornings, and we've created a sign-up sheet and had it going around during the service last week, and we'll be doing this again this week. So Wanda's got the clipboard. Um, so please, we had so many of you sign up for goodies, but we just need to fill the coffee. So Carol, Carol Reed has been doing the coffee over the summer, and she's done a fantastic job doing that. But come winter, it's not as easy for her to get here in the mornings, and it's just we'd like to fill in those coffee um, preparation. So that would be really appreciated. And actually, if we could have even just a roster of three to six people that want to rotate and do the coffee, that might work out really good too. So Carol and I are happy to train you so that you can add a new skill to your list of amazing skills that you already have. Thank you. Okay. So if you have an announcement that you would like to, to be heard next Sunday, please let the office know by Friday. Um, thanks to Brian and Len and Wanda and, okay, who else, who brought the goodies today? Wanda's doing coffee, Wanda brought the goodies today, Carol, and oh, and Wilma was doing coffee today too. So thank you all very much. And to um, Gord for doing our um, technic work. Um, and now I'd like to welcome Alfreda, who will be leading the service today.
Good morning. So, um, as many of you, I'm sure, are wondering, um, Eli has been uh, told by her, by her doctor to take a medical leave for two weeks. So, Eli won't be here this week or next week. And we're hoping that uh, everything will be better after that, but we'll have to wait and see. And in the meantime, um, actually, Carla, I should have talked to you, but I just caught, caught the Enid before and asked whether maybe Enid would bring a card next week that we could sign, a get well thinking of you kind of a card that we could get to Eli. So that would be kind of nice if we can remember to sign it next week. Thanks, Enid. Um, and then fortunately for us, or for me, Eli has already put together much of the service before, before they were um, told to stay home. So we will mostly be following that. But because I've made some changes, the bulletins that you have will not be accurate. So just the PowerPoint will be accurate. So please just watch for that. So uh, join me in the call to worship, please. Come to this place where we belong, a place of welcome and of witness. We come to rejoice in the one who celebrates each of us and all of us. But you're not smiling. Rejoice, okay? That's what we were told to do in the scripture. Rejoice again and again, for this is our place. We are invited by the risen Christ. We come as we are in thanksgiving for such an unconditional welcome. Here, we discover whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, whatever calls us to excellence. We come to seek in word and in action our place at the table. We come to praise God in song and now in prayer. God of welcome, God of love, we come as those you invite to travel the way. This is one of the places where we can grow into your heart and you into ours. In the symphony of your creation, you call us to rejoice in the harmonies, to lean into dissonance, which eventually resolves to encounter major and minor keys and everything in between as your gift of diversity, to take the rests as they come, and to sustain the notes of joy for each other. We praise you for inviting everyone to be born into new life. Amen. So our centering hymn is, In You There is a Refuge. More Voices 84. Please remain seated as we sing. When the cold wind blows and winter's blast seems closer to home, lighting a candle reminds us of the warmth and love God holds for us all. Now we'll have our gathering hymn, Creator God, You Gave Us Life, More Voices 27. Please stand as you are able.
be seated. So children's story, unfortunately we don't have a children's story today, but the children could come up and sing with us, please. And you know the words and the actions already, so we'll sing it two times. Let's wait for the kids. So it's, sorry, like a rock, and more voices, 92. Okay. So Wilma will read our scripture passage. May our hearts and minds be open so that as we listen to these readings, may we find wisdom in these words for our daily living. Amen. Isaiah 25, verses 1 to 9. Yahweh, you are my God. I exalt you. I praise your name, for you do marvelous things, planned long ago with steadfast faithfulness. You turned cities into dump heaps, fortified cities into rubble. Strongholds of foreigners are no more, never to be rebuilt. It is for this reason that the powerful honor you, and cities of ruthless people fear you. Yet, you are a refuge to poor people, refuge to the needy in their distress, shelter in the storm, shade from the heat, for the breath of the ruthless is like an ice storm or a scorching drought. You subdue the roar of the enemy and the mantra of tyrants is stilled. On this mountain, Yahweh Omnipotent will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, food rich and succulent and fine aged wines. On this mountain, God will remove the morning veil covering all peoples, the shroud covering all nations, destroying all death forever. God will wipe away the tears from every cheek and will take away the shame of God's people on earth wherever they live. Yahweh has spoken. 
On that day, it will be said, this is our God. This is the one for whose liberation we waited. Yahweh is the one in whom we had hoped. We rejoice exultingly in our deliverance. Here with the Spirit is saying to you this morning, may be blessed with understanding. Thank you, choir, and thank you, Wilma, for the reading. Wilma shared with me this morning that uh, this, it was kind of a tough reading to, to do or to come to grips with, but in, in light of the wars going on in Israel and Palestine right now, it was actually quite fitting. And I'm sure that Eli had a reflection in mind for today that would follow up on the scripture reading and talk about the war and things. Um, but I've chosen a lighter topic, and um, I'm calling it Life is Not an Emergency, which maybe is a bit ironic, I guess, because obviously in the Middle East is very much an emergency for them. But this is referring to everyday, everyday life and the way we can approach it. So bear with me. Um, so Carla's going to read the first excerpt from Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, my, my go-to for when I'm doing these services. I hope you're not getting tired of the stories yet. Um, so she'll read the first one, and um, it's uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff is written by Richard Carlson. So Carla, thank you. Richard. 
Remind yourself when you die, your basket won't be empty. So many of us live our lives as if the secret purpose is to somehow get everything done. We stay up late, we get up early, we avoid having fun, and keep our loved ones waiting. Sadly, I see many people who put off their loved ones so long that the loved ones lose interest in maintaining the relationship. Often, we convince ourselves that our obsession with our to-do list is only temporary, that once we get through the list, we'll be calm, relaxed, and happy. Can anyone identify with this? <laughs> but in reality, this rarely happens. As items are checked off, new ones simply replace them. The nature of your in-basket is that it's meant to have items to be completed in it. It's not meant to be empty. There will always, there will always be phone calls that need to be made, projects to complete, and work to be done. In fact, it can be argued that a full in-basket is essential for success. It means your time is in demand. Regardless of who you are or what you do, however, remember that nothing is more important than your own sense of happiness and inner peace, and that of your loved ones. If you're obsessed with getting everything done, you'll never have a sense of well-being. In reality, almost everything can wait. Very little in our work lives truly falls into the emergency category. If you stay focused on your work, it will all get done in due time. I find that if I remind myself frequently that the purpose of life isn't to get it all done, but to enjoy, enjoy each step along the way and live a life filled with love, it's far easier for me to control my obsession with completing my list of things to do. Remember, when you die, there will still be unfinished business to take care of. And you know what? Someone else will do it for you. Don't waste any more precious moments of your life regretting having tried to get everything done. Thank you, Carla. The second excerpt from Don't Sweat the Small Stuff is called Repeat to Yourself, Life Isn't an Emergency. A few days ago, I had one of those days where many upsetting things happened in short order. A friend whom I had been really looking forward to visiting with couldn't come for coffee at the last minute. I found out another friend has pneumonia and has been stuck in the hospital in Vancouver where she went to visit her family. Then I heard that Eli needs to be on medical leave for two weeks. And what about today's service? And what about next week's service? And then my cell phone decided to quit. <laughs> So then Liliana sent me Eli's prepared worship file for this service, and I realized that we can use most of it, and it's not that big an emergency. The next day, my wonderful son-in-law fixed my phone, and I received a text from my friend in Vancouver that she's finally allowed to come home. So these emergencies had passed too. Of course, we do experience real-life emergencies in our lives, but this excerpt is referring to an approach to everyday life that might help us to be a more peaceful person. So this was written by Richard Carlson. Although most people believe otherwise, the truth is life isn't an emergency. I've had hundreds of clients over the years who have all but neglected their families as well as their own dreams because of their propensity to believe that life is an emergency. They justify their neurotic behavior by believing that if they don't work 80 hours a week, they won't get everything done. Sometimes I remind them that when they die, their in-basket won't be empty. A client who is a homemaker and mother of three children recently said to me, I just can't get the house cleaned up the way I like it before everyone leaves in the morning. She was so upset over her inability to be perfect that her doctor had prescribed her anti-anxiety medication. She was acting and feeling like there was a gun pointed at her head, and the sniper was demanding that every dish be put away and every towel folded or else. Again, the silent assumption was, this is an emergency. The truth was, no one other than she had created the pressure she was experiencing. I've never met anyone, myself included, who hasn't turned little things into great big emergencies. We take, out our own, we take our own goals so seriously that for, we forget to have fun along the way, and we forget to cut ourselves some slack. We take simple preferences and turn them into conditions for our own happiness. Or we beat ourselves up if we can't meet our self-created deadlines. 
The first step in becoming a more peaceful person is to have the humility to admit that in most cases you're creating your own emergencies. Life will usually go on if things don't go according to plan. It's helpful to keep reminding yourself and repeating the sentence, life is not an emergency. And then I, re then I remind myself that God is our refuge and our rock. Real and perceived emergencies will happen, but God is always there to help us through them. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. <laughs> So our hymn of response is Joy Comes with the Dawn, Voices United 166. Please stand as you're able. There are many ways to give to Millwoods United Church, in person, by check, par, or online at the church website. Please consider giving generously to support our many programs. The offering will now be received.
Let's stand and sing, Grant us God the grace of giving, from Voices United 540. abundant God, you fill our lives with blessing. We thank you for meeting many of our daily needs for food, shelter, companionship, and meaning. We respond with joy and celebration. These offerings are the symbols of our lives. We give our lives back to you now. Where we can go, may we be a blessing. Where we cannot go, bless these offerings to go for us. Amen. Please be seated. And Dave, would you be okay to take a microphone around to, or Audrey, whichever? There's one on the cart there. Oh, Celia's got it. Okay. Thank you. So let's start with, uh, with the birthdays and anniversaries. Does anyone, is anyone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this month? Carla? So, Carla's celebrating a birthday. Okay. And Jan, birth, Jan's birthday as well. Great. Okay. Bailey? Oh, and it would be Kathy Bailey's birthday today, too. Okay, great. Well, let's sing. You can stay seated. Let's sing your happy birthday song. Does anybody have any joys, concerns, or gratitude to share today? Carla? I would like prayers for, I have a cousin who was just recently diagnosed with lymphoma. It's a cancer of the mm -hmm. bone. He's um, the blood in his bones. So um, mm -hmm. just hoping, th it's, it's apparently quite treatable. So just um, prayers for him. And also just prayers for a safe journey home. Rob and Jennifer are, have started their journey home today. So we're wishing them a safe travels. Um, I also want to thank Gord for stepping in and doing the PowerPoint. It would have been my day today. We have such a good team of PowerPoint people that when one of us needs to do something different or can't be here or whatever, we just switch schedules and we just all help each other out. So thank you, Gord. Appreciate it. And thanks also to the ladies who decorated. I believe it was Kathy Bailey and Kathy Peckman who did the decorations for Thanksgiving last week. So it's a gorgeous display. Thank you for that. Okay. And we, uh, we also need to acknowledge then the war that started this week in Israel and Palestine. And so let us sing this song with the hope that there will be light and understanding, that the nations will gather and get along with each other. Our hymn of prayer is Let There Be Light, the Voices United 679. walk from here, may you walk with justice and mercy in your heart and with joy in your soul. Let's sing when you walk from here.
Thank you. You may be seated.